Hi, MBA 515 students. Good evening. Tonight, as promised, I wanted to review with you the bar chart, what we've been calling the last couple of weeks a Gantt chart, but I wanted to review the bar chart and add an additional dimension to it. And that additional dimension is resource analysis. Quite simply, what we want to do now is add resources to our bar chart. We've generated a sequence. From that sequence, we've done a network diagram. From that network diagram, we've done a forward pass and a backward pass. And from that, we've been able to identify and create a critical path. With the information generated, that would be early start and early finish dates, or work units, as well as late start and late finish dates, or work units, we're able to get an idea of what is the critical path as well as what is non-critical path and those activities which feed into that critical path. Behind me, what I'm wanting to share with you is a bar chart that I've created. And with this bar chart, I've added the additional dimension of a resource. That is, each activity is going to require a certain number of resources for that activity to be worked on and to be completed. So if you look at the bar chart behind me, what I want to do is identify a couple things for you before we talk a little bit further about resource analysis. First thing is to identify that you've got a task. And that task, in this case, I'm showing as a letter of the alphabet. Now, each one of these tasks is going to be requiring a certain number of resources in order to complete that task or that activity. So in this case, I've created a column, which is the R column, which is telling me how many resources are needed for a particular task. So for example, on task activity ID A, it's going to require two resources to be able to do that task. Column D speaks to the duration of that particular activity. And as well, from my forward and backward pass, I've been able to identify the early start, as well as the late finish, and finally, I'm able to identify float, or what we also call slack, in which I've identified in this particular column as SL. Now looking at my bar chart, what I've done is I've taken each of the activities and created a bar for each of them. Starting on day zero and ending on day 14, I've got my Gantt chart that speaks to the relationships of all of my activities. I've identified here activity A with an early start of zero for a duration of two days, one, two, should have a late finish of day two, and that is accurate. And it is on the critical path because it has zero slack. So I show that bar as such. For activity B, it is a duration of one day, and it starts on my early start date of day zero. It has a late finish date of day two with a slack date of one. And I show the slack as a dotted line because as easily this particular activity task B could start on day one and be completed at the end of day two if, in fact, we were to utilize that one day of slack. So when you look at the rest of the bar chart, I use that certain logic to be able to, to draw in the particular bar. And in those instances where those activities have slack, I take the slack and I dot it in with a light line instead of a solid line to give me an idea of what, and Eve said this appropriately in class, of what leeway I have with that particular activity during the particular time that we are engaged in that activity. So how does then this resource column play into effect? Well, knowing that each of these activities, as I've listed here in these columns, is requiring two resources, or in our instance, let's call them two two individuals or two humans to be able to work on these tasks, that then each day 
as that task is being worked on, it's going to require two people. So in this particular instance, if we look, utilizing our early starts of day zero, if we look at uh, uh, the first unit day of zero to one, the first day of work, we've got activity A, activity B, and activity C concurring at the same time. That's what our bar chart is telling us. Each of those activities is requiring two people to be working on those activities. So the dimension of the resource added to this bar chart tells us that on day one, we're going to require one, two, three, four, five, six resources to work on that first day. When we look at day two, we go through the same analysis. Day one to two, activity a is two people. Activity B is not being done because we performed that activity on day one. Activity C is being performed. And so we have one, two, three, four people working on that activity day two. Now you're probably wondering, I've got fours listed down here below at the end of each day, representing essentially what are the available resources for each one of these days. So as we've gone through and analyzed day one and determined that we need six people for day one, we are constrained. Remember that word constraint. We have a situation where we must have a workaround in that Day one, we are only allowed four resources to work that day. Yet, our bar chart indicates to us that we require six. Enough said. We're able to see from our bar chart that we're going to have to make some adjustments to our schedule to be able to allow for four people to work this day because six people is too many and we're not able to get enough resources to be able to work that first day. So you could say, looking that we have one day of slack with activity B, that why not push activity B to the second day? That would essentially make our first day meet our resource quota of four. So this, chick, this six would re be reduced to four, and then we would be looking at our second day. Now, however, if we do have to work this day two for activity B, we now have one, two, three, four, five, six. And so now we basically swapped. And so four resources available for day one, good. Now we have six resources needed for day two, and that exceeds our resource availability of four. So we've just basically swapped our resources and we still have not been able to make it work for day two since we're limited to four resources. So finally we look at maybe activity C and see that we may be able to push this activity to be utilized during the course of the next four working days as we do have four days of slack. So for example, maybe we take this activity and we push it to days five and six. In doing so, pushing it to days five and six, I will draw a red bar for day five and day six, and we will eliminate the activity from these days here. In doing so, then going back, let's take a look at what we have. We've got one, two, three, four resources, four resources. We're good for day one. We've got one, two resources. So two resources and 
we are able to meet that resource and stay within our daily availability of need for four resources, well, we certainly have met that quote where we are able to be less than four resources and we haven't exceeded it, so we certainly can work that day. This particular day, day three, one, two, three, four, four. Day, day four, we've got one, two, three, four. Have not exceeded four resources. We're in good shape here. Day five, when we pushed activity C out to have a late start of day four and a late finish of day six, meets our two day criteria. Utilizing the complete four days of slack, we've got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So as you can see, we've been able to manipulate our bar chart. And manipulating our bar chart to meet resource constraints, which is a maximum of four resources to utilize per day. The only day we were short was this particular day where we needed two resources, basically to complete activity A. There was no need to complete any of the other activities, so two new resources was below the four resources that were needed. We were fine. You can see then with the adjustments made, we're able to have enough resources to carry on with these two activities. And as well, as a result of extending and pushing our activity C to a late start of day four and a late finish of day six, we were able then to manage our resources and to be able to meet the constraints of four resources available per day. So behind me in going through that exercise, I hope you were able to follow. But the idea is, is that now that we've been able to capture resources and get an understanding of the availability of resources within our bar chart, we're able now to look at the bar chart and to do the exercise of what I just shared with you, which was to analyze and to be able to move resources about utilizing the Slack and with Slack, being able to manage resources in a way that we can have them available and have them be sufficient to meet what our needs are for each and every day within that particular project. The value of the bar chart goes a long way other than just being a nice pretty graphic, but it does, given resources and given constraints to resources, allows us to manipulate and to be able to see how we can manage the project and ensure that we have adequate resources to fill the bill and to meet the requirements that are needed to complete each of the activities.